Thank you very much, John. And on behalf of the European Parliament Office in Ireland, I'd very much like to welcome the holding of this important conference here in Dublin. And I'm pleased that we have been able to work together with Arthritis Ireland in helping to organize it. And I'd particularly like to thank Harry O'Connor and Rachel Pigeon of my staff for their assistance on this project. Ema Costello, Labour MEP for Dublin, is not able to be present today. She's working in committees in, in Brussels, but she's taken a close interest in this conference and has recorded a video uh, message which will be shown shortly. I just wanted to give a few very brief words of introduction. Um, as John has said, the Fit for Work initiative uh, covers um, many major policy uh, challenges facing Europe today. How to improve public health, how to maximize levels of employment, and how to improve Europe's competitiveness. MSDs um, are costly both for individuals and for society at large, leading to widespread physical and mental suffering, an extensive absenteeism or even permanent work incapacity for those affected, as well as reduced productivity and higher costs for their employers. So alleviating these problems requires them to be tackled in an integrated way at both national and European level and by a wide variety of actors, including doctors, patients and employers and policy makers in many different fields. The Fit for Work Alliance is making a significant contribution in these respects, both by stimulating national action plans in now up to 30 countries and by promoting Europe-wide coordination. Gradually over the last few years, the European Union treaties have been uh, changed in order to give a greater emphasis to health, to health problems. Now, health issues, of course, are primarily still a national com uh, competence, but there's a lot that can be done also at EU level. Firstly, obviously, uh, the European Union can devote more research, uh, more uh, funds to research, and that's one of the areas which is almost certainly going to be increased, although the negotiations on the longer-term European budget are continuing. Research is one of the areas which has been protected and increased uh, in the budget. And then there is an article in the treaty, Article 168, which deals with health, which provides for cross-border health scourges to be, to be tackled at European level. Um, European action primarily complements national action, but that doesn't make, make it any less important. And there are lots of things it can do, uh, including coordination, exchange of best practice, and, and of course, as I've said, research. Um, the European Parliament has developed itself a strong role in the issues you're dealing with today through its uh, Environment Committee, which in spite of its name also deals with, with health policy and a very important part of its work, um, the Employment Committee, and um, a body which coordinates research work called the Scientific and Technological Options Assessment body within the European Parliament. And the European Parliament also has an all-party intergroup on disability, which has taken a great interest. So um, the discussion at today's conference will be fed back into all this work into the European Parliament, and I wish you a very successful conference and look forward to your conclusions. Thank you very much. Thank you.